Hi guys, I hope you guys are all doing well and that yesterday you guys had a great day with a sub. Um, I just want to explain what you're doing today because I know the worksheet might be a little difficult just the first time you're glancing through. So let's go through the worksheet at the top that says well digger data, okay? So the top table is separating our, our layers, our substances into permeable, meaning that they can hold and pass water, um, and impermeable, meaning they cannot, they contain water, they cannot hold water. Okay, so we've sorted them into two categories first, and then we have our drillers records for Lansing, Michigan. Okay, so there's three wells we're looking at, well one, well two, and well three. All right, let's look at well one specifically together. Okay, so we're reading from the top to the bottom, all right, and well one is shown below in that picture. So what you're going to do is you are going to fill in what the layer is. So if we look, let's do glacial coarse sand first, all right? So we're going to go down how many feet? 50. All right, so we start at zero. You've got to go down 50 feet, so... It's that like thin line. If you look right here, okay, that thin line. All right, that is our well. You can see it's contained. So you're gonna go down 50, draw a line, okay? And you're gonna write off to the side that the first 50 feet is glacial coarse sand, okay? Then from there, up next we have glacial fine sand, which is another 50 feet. So that's gonna bring us down to the 100 feet mark. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. It counts down one way up the other. doesn't matter what side you look at. Okay. I would recommend looking at the side that's counting up though, because that's what we're seeing. All right. So then after you label all of that, um, you have to identify the layers. So what layers are aquifers? Okay. What layers are aquacludes, meaning they don't hold water. All right. And then you have to identify what are the confined aquifers, okay? Confined, remember, means there's an impermeable layer on top, impermeable layer on the bottom. Anyways, um, I'm scrolling down. How do wells affect the water table? I want you to try at least every single question. If you don't understand something, that's okay. Don't put I don't know. Leave room for us to go through this together, but don't just... Like, leave it blank, okay? So then, starting with number 10, you're looking at a new diagram, okay? So you are looking at layers, okay? And this is um, gonna start identifying this idea of the law of superposition. So in earth science, this is important for us, especially as we start to look at fossils or how uh, sediment um, traveled to a place and what layer it was deposited in first. So if you think about a driveway, this is how I remember. How do you know what car got to the house first? The car furthest in the driveway or shallowest? I'll give you a minute to think. Right, the one that's in there first, the shallowest. So when we're looking at layers, okay, the deepest layer, that's the one that got there first, okay? So you are going to need Bless you. Sorry. Ian's sneezing during this. Blame him for the distraction. Um, so I want you to do your best for this one. Label the water table if you can. Look at your notes. I'm pretty sure you guys have this. A very similar picture on the exact, like in the exact format on another paper I gave you. But if not, again, just do your best. Um, if you would like to use any form of color on this, you may use the colored pencils. Just make sure that they find their way back there. All right, here's where I have a deal for you guys. There is a very, very, very funny video of me from right after surgery. If you guys are awesome today, did all your work yesterday, all your work today, that video, I'll play it Monday. If not, stay in the vault, okay? Have a great day in earth science. I miss you guys. I will see you Monday.